everybody. Hello, hello. This is Rochelle Fletcher here with you for Goodness Speaks and Live Network for Women. We're so happy to be live with you this morning on this Tuesday morning. And um, we are just thrilled. We cannot wait. I have a special friend with me, as you see on the screen. Her name is Lise, and we're going to introduce her in just a moment. But first, I just want to welcome you. Thanks for tuning in today. It's, it's going to be a treat. I'm telling you, we have grabbed our coffee. Lise, you got your tea or your coffee? We got oh, our good. coffee. We love having coffee with friends, don't we? Mm -hmm. Conversations about the Lord, about prayer. It's going to be an amazing time today. Goodness Speaks is a show that teaches you about how to, that goodness actually has a voice and how you can be the voice of goodness to others. And uh, just real quick, for those of you who have not ever been introduced to who I am, my name is Rochelle Fletcher. I am the founder of The Goodness Project, along with my husband, Bill. I'm a speaker. I'm an advocate for life. I'm a lover of women. I have Lisa on here. I'm a lover of women. I'm, I love my friends. I love women. I love seeing women rise up to their calling and who they are called to be in this season. And The Goodness Project's mission is to provide resources to other churches and nonprofits so that they, in turn, can support families and children in crisis. That's what our mission in life is all about, not just The Goodness Project, but that's what our life's mission has been, is to mm -hmm. show the goodness of God. And if you mm -hmm. think about Amen. goodness, at least Amen. you and I were just talking about this as we were preparing and praying today, that goodness has a voice right yes, it does and you know when you think of goodness what do you think about you go ahead and answer that for us i'll introduce you in just a minute but i'm just gonna <laughs> we got our coffee and we might as well just talk today so when, you of, when you think of goodness please what do you think of well i think you've you've heard me say before one of the my most favorite things about god is how intentional he is to love us amen he is we, we don't have to beg him to remind us or to let us know. He uses girlfriends all the time. I don't know how many times we've been a blessing to one another and so many of our other girlfriends that would send a song or a text or a scripture or just call and have prayer together. And to me, those are all different ways that God lets us know he's intentional to hear our hearts and to know exactly what's going on. Yes, his one goodness. Of my favorite things. That's, I mean, it is, it's one of my favorites that he's so intentional for when we need to know about his goodness, when okay. we're in that moment, when we're discouraged, or we need that encouragement from a friend, from the word of God, Absolutely. from however he wants to show his goodness. And so, but I don't want to jump ahead because I do want to tell you about my friend before she gets to talking. So, um, yes, yeah, so we want you to stay tuned every week right here on Life Network for Women so that you, and I just want to stop just for a moment and thank Paula White, thank her team. Mm -hmm for putting this network together to, to have, for women to have voices to collaborate together as one resounding voice for God in this season. So thank you to Paula White Kane and her team. But um, we do want to stay connected with you. So if you wanna learn more about the Goodness Project and what we're doing, we have locations all over the world right now. We have, um, I know, praise God, praise God. He's, we're gonna talk about that on this um, Goodness Speak show. And actually today we're talking about goodness how God stores up his goodness for those who fear him. Mm -hmm. That's our topic for today. Mm -hmm. And so God has stored up his goodness for you. He has stored up his goodness. And I want to share more with you about how he has done that. So we have locations in Dallas, Fort Worth, in Buffalo, in Canada, in Nashville, mm -hmm. and in Israel. Yeah, we're, I can't, uh, this is Canadian. So, um, <laughs> I'll tell you about her in just a moment. But in addition to the work I do with the Goodness Project, um, you know, I love worship. I love leading worship mm -hmm. and helping others enter into the presence of God through worship. I love women finding their voices in, in this season and in this life as a mother, as a business owner, in whatever sphere of influence that you're in. And there's transition going on all around us right now. So we'll be talking more about that on the Voice for the Kingdom show that's also on this network. You'll want to look for that. That's another show I'm doing called Voice for the Kingdom, and I will help you find your voice, but first you have to hear God's voice, right? We can't find our voice if we don't hear from God in his voice and partner with the Lord in prayer. And that's why I have Lisa on the show with us today. Um, also, um, in addition to all of this, I was honored, truly, truly honored to be a collaborative author with 51 other women in a devotional book called The Invitation to Intimacy with God. 
and it's published by HarperCollins, um, Thomas Nelson. You can find that on my website. I want you to get a copy of that if you don't have that. Um, at RochelleFletcher.com, R-A-C-H-E-L-L-E, Fletcher.com. I have those books available for you there. You want to get that copy. Please stay connected with me. I want to hear from you. If you have a prayer request, you can just send me a message on my, uh, on my website, or you can type in your comments here. I love praying for women and standing with you for truth and what God is doing in your life. But because of the generosity of uh, Paula White Kane and Life Network for Women, we have, Lisa and I have the honor of being with you today. And so I wanna introduce her right now, I can't wait. I'm like bubbling up inside. She's been my friend for over 30 years. Long she time. is a intercessor, long time, haven't we babe? Intercessor, grandmother of seven. Can you guys believe, just look at her. Can you believe she's a grandmother of seven? She's beautiful and I'm beautiful inside and out. And um, just one of the closest friends that I have. And, and the reason why we're close um, is because she's been instrumental in praying for our family and praying for our ministry. And she's believed in me, even when it was hard to believe in me, when I wasn't acting right or, you know, not saying the right things and being sensitive to her needs. So Lisa, just tell the, tell the viewers who you are. Just take a moment. I've done a lot of talking. I want to hear from you. Tell them about who you are. Thank you for the privilege of being on the show together. It is wonderful to be able to talk freely about the things of God with what is going on in our world today yeah. and some of the things that we're noticing. It is not something that we take for granted. Yeah. And just being able to have friends is such a beautiful thing from God. And just like I have, um, you said you had put things away. <laughs> I mean, you said that for me, mm -hmm. you didn't mind I, I let go of things that maybe were offensive or hurtful and maybe that you forgot to do or didn't do. And it's the same thing. Yeah. You have done the same for me in my life. And it doesn't matter. God, as, as we love one another, as we put things down, we see the things that he's stored up for us, even with the friendships and the blessing of the friendships. As we let things go that maybe aren't perfect or that we don't like or whatever it is. <laughs> but God has been so good and you have seen me through rough times, especially um, the last 10 years. There've been a lot of changes and starting a business and, and God bringing things out of me that I didn't know were in there either. Yes. And so I've, I've called you many times and said, let's worship friend. Yes. And we just, and <laughs> so I just love it. And you'd go to the piano and we'd worship together <laughs> and then get to know God and he'd see us through those difficult times mm -hmm. and also just to rejoice and bless and worship him because we love him. Amen. That's so true, Liz. That's so true. I, I love the fact that we can just, when we don't know what to do, we may not have the answer for the problem that one another is facing, but we know the God who does and that's what we do together. And, we're, and that's why I have Lise on today is we're going to be talking more about partnering with the Lord in prayer. And she started a new podcast called Enjoy, Enjoy an Encounter yes. with God. Yes, please. So they can find that on Instagram. You can go to the Instagram, Google, Spotify, Apple, subscribe, and it'll come every week to your phone on Thursday mornings. There is a devotional and some scriptures and prayers on the website, www.enjoyandencounter.com. And they will find all the podcasts there as well as some extra kind of prayers. If they're not sure just how to get started, then yeah. they're there. I love that so much. I'm so excited that you're stepping out in this season to do what God has called you to do. It's an assignment, truly, right? That God's called you to do, to do this. <laughs> God, and I think my friend Michelle gave me quite a big push. Like several you, times get this done girl get this <laughs> yes you were encouraged very very instrumental in letting me know you already do this every day with people yeah. on the phone and you already do this on zoom calls so just start a podcast so. You're talking so much you can do this to teach others i love that so much that sometimes we kind of push each other right we push each other into those seasons where god's calling and you're you know so we'll talk more about that but so glad to have you on today lisa it is such oh, an honor you to thank do this. We've been talking about doing this for a while. So I'm like, you know, kind of like a little girl inside jumping up and down, dancing and twirling around right now. So it's such a privilege to have you on today. But our, our scripture for today, and I, I'm so excited. We're actually, I'm actually going to have Elise pray at the end, pray through this and show you kind of what she does on enjoying an encounter. But on the last episode, we talked about how to live 
in the goodness of God. How many of us want to live in the goodness of God, right? Like, at least we talk about this all the time. How do we live in his goodness, even though things around us may not look good? How do we live continuously in his goodness? Well, we join him in his nature. There's a lot of that we talked about on the last uh, Facebook Live, not Facebook Live. Well, what's Facebook Live? Yes, it's Facebook Live, <laughs> Life Network for Women Live. It's a lot of places. So this week we're going to be talking about, like I said, how God stores up his goodness. And so Psalm 31, 19 and 20, I'm just going to read this to you. It says, how great is the goodness you have stored up for those who fear you. You lavish it on those who come to you for protection, blessing them before the watching world. You know, I think, Lee, sometimes we, we don't want people to know the blessing of God because we want to be, um, I guess, the, for lack of a better word, we want to be humble. We don't want to like, you know, say, hey, this is what God's done to bless us. But you know, when we're telling others God is blessing us, it's showing his goodness in us, not, not elevating what we're doing. And so verse 20, it says, you hide them in the shelter of your presence, safe from those who conspire against them. You shelter them in your presence, far from accusing tongues. And we're going to talk about this right here in just a moment. And so I've been asking the Lord what he wanted this, what, what he wanted this to be today, what he wanted you to get from this today, from the goodness of God. I know many of you today need encouragement. You need exhortation. You need to know, um, you need to be equipped with the word of God and, and through worship and through prayer and through the word, you can be equipped to whatever situation you're facing right now to know that goodness has a voice and that someone around you will speak life into you. And if someone doesn't, God will, you will find his voice in the word. You will find his voice in times of prayer. And so, um, we, we've already talked about how our friendship has, has, we've been had seasons of friendship throughout our years, you know, over 30 years ago, when we first met Lise, our lives were quite different. Just a little bit. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it's been beautiful to see, like, I remember when we first met that, you know, you, you had children and I didn't, and you know, and you had all these children. And so I would just to show his goodness, I would just try to be there for you and hold your baby or I'd say, what can I do to help you? You know, and you're a mom of three. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I'm a grandmother now and you're not yet. Right, right. So she was an earlier mother than I was. And so we just, we have, but we've walked through seasons, seasons together, seasons. even Amen. though you faced different um, situations at that time. I was really married yeah. and different challenges we still had this heart to heart connection because we were just there. We were trying to be there for one another and be true. We're both hungry for God. That's huge. So hungry for God. Yes. That makes all the difference. And it seems like like hearts gravitate in that way so yeah. often. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were hungry for God and we were hungry for his truth. Yeah. We were hungry to know. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> through our griping and through complaining sometimes in our earlier years. And, you know, we were, we were still hungry for truth and we've learned, we've learned, we have some wisdom that we have acquired over the 30 years and we're still acquiring his wisdom and learning and iron sharpens iron with friendship for sure. Amen. So I thank God for your treasure. You're such a treasure okay. in my life. Um, I just, I just want to start with one little story before we get more into your interview, if that's okay, because as I begin to think about this topic about God storing up his goodness, I begin to think about, you know, cause you walked with me through a lot of seasons. So back when we were pastoring a church and I was in a transition season, I had been through a desert season. Some of you've heard my story. Some of you haven't, I'm not going to go into all the details of that, but just call it a really difficult, challenging desert season, financial crisis, trying to figure out what God is saying moment, which I think we can all say we've been there at one moment, one moment in time. I, I, I would call Lise and I would pray and I would just tell her the way God was speaking, the way his voice was being activated in my life. And in this season, there were dreams reoccurring dreams mm -hmm. that he gave me and I didn't understand it. There was always a baby being abandoned, left on the floor. There would be people walking around everywhere, but no one was taking care of the infant, the baby. Mm -hmm. And I knew in my dream that there was, there was actually church people, like people, godly people walking around because there was worship and there was, and at the time we were pastoring. So it was in that same vein but I would notice the baby and it was almost like the baby was highlighted and I would have to walk over and, and 
I wouldn't have to, but the Lord compelled me to walk over and rescue the baby and pick up the baby. And every time I picked up the baby, I would wake up knowing that there was a rescue going on. And in this season, I was trying to figure out how we were going to, to get through this financial crisis and what God was calling us to do. And, and of course, I'm praying, Lord, you know, give the answer. Show me the answer. Lisa's praying with me on the phone. My other friends are praying with me on the phone like an iron sharpens iron. And he was giving me these dreams. Uh, and I'm like, not cluing in. He, like, he's trying to talk to me in <laughs> these recurring dreams. And so I began to seek out the mysteries. I began mm -hmm. to try to figure out what he was saying. And it was so beautiful because at the same time that that was happening, we had laid down our work with the Goodness Project temporarily because of the crisis. We were trying mm -hmm. to just, our, you know, our girls didn't have what they needed. We didn't have enough to pay our bills. We kept going further and further in debt. And we were trying to figure out how we were going to make an income. How were we going to live? And so it, it was, it was for us, it was a crisis. You know, many may, may not see it as a crisis, but for us, it was definitely a crisis. And so in that time, um, Bill actually started over. I, I went to work for a, during that time, all those, when those dreams were happening, the Lord led me to go work for a pro-life organization. That's what those dreams were about. And Lise was helping me try to figure it out and go to the Lord and ask him. And you know, that's what I did. I invited the Lord to show me what does this mean? And he didn't show me right away. It actually took about two years after I had those dreams. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you with that. Many times the Lord will speak or give a prophetic word or a dream, and we think it's instantaneously for that moment. And I had to find peace in that moment to find his goodness to say, Lord, what are you saying? And the last time I had that dream, he said, I just want you to rest. I will, I will tell you in time. I just want you to rest in this. And then I kind of just put it away for a while and realized later, that's why he gave me the dreams was he was, he was sending me to work at a pro-life organization. He was storing up his goodness, not just for me and my family, but so that these babies could have rescue, so that these moms could know that they were loved, so that others would, would know the goodness of God, but he was preparing me ahead of time. And we're going to talk about that in your life too, Lise. And so when I went back to work at the Goodness Project, I mean, when I, let me rephrase that. When I went back to work at Human Coalition, my husband started over at the Goodness Project in 2014. And, you know, I was trying to figure out how all this is working because God gave us this vision in 2002. We started the Goodness Project in 2002. So to lay it down, surrender it all and say, we're giving it up. Like this is, we know God gave us this vision, but we're going to lay it down. And I find in surrender, it's the best position. Lisa and I've talked about this too. And when I laid that down and he sent me to Human Coalition to work along some amazing people who were advocates for life, mm -hmm. who helped me find my voice. I actually grew so much in that season. Bill started all over with the Goodness Project, had to literally start all over. And we were, I think he was in his early fifties. I would have to figure that out. But I know we were later, at, you know, in life thinking, oh my goodness, we're going to start all over again. <laughs> that was the hardest part is we did all this work. Is it wasted? Is God's goodness really for us, you know, and for our family? We have those thoughts. We have those doubts. So we're going to talk about that with Lise here in just a moment. So God was actually storing up his goodness. I had no idea at his orchestration and the way he was like this, this chess game that he was doing with moving all the pieces and the parts to put our lives back together and not just for us so that the goodness could be stored up for these families and children. So I'm going to, I'm going to finish the story and then I want to get to talking with Lise because she's got so many good things to say. So we ended up getting one warehouse starting over. Bill began to uh, just call his contacts and start giving things out again and just living by faith and tuning into God's voice in that season and still trying to figure out what we're going to do with our family. So we got one warehouse, God filled it up and we kept giving it out and he kept filling it up and we kept giving it out. Amen. And then we got two warehouses. He Amen. kept filling it up. We kept giving it out. And then we got three warehouses. And so do you get the picture here? <laughs> Every time we would step out in faith. He would fill up the storehouse. His, he was storing up his goodness for us. And now we have a 150,000 square foot warehouse, one warehouse that houses all of that in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, a warehouse in Nashville, a distribution center with a resource center to help other nonprofits to go out to help families in crisis. One in Buffalo, one in Canada, three in Israel. 
Can we just get a hallelujah? The faithfulness of God, the faithfulness of God, his goodness, goodness. Faithfulness. It's so good. And Lisa, you've been instrumental. You've been instrumental in this. And so I just want to thank you for that. But I want to ask you um, a question. I wanted to share that story because I just couldn't help, like when I was thinking about the goodness of God stored up, we've seen this, we've seen this activated in our life, but how did you, how were you called to be an intercessor? How were you called to prayer originally? Uh, originally, I was very young, probably 12, and I was at a camp in Northern Canada. And I remember we were going to move. My dad's a pastor. And my father taught me so many amazing things that are just part of who I am today. And that is that serve, uh, being a leader is being a servant first. That was key. Yeah. He's amazing. And then I think this is where it started. I saw him saying that the altar is one of the most important places on the earth. You yeah. want to find the goodness of God, go to the altar. It's, wow. it's not a thing that's done too often today. In fact, most churches don't have that that I've seen but it was a common place for my father. And even though he was pastor of the church, he would frequently get down from the pulpit and he would kneel at the altar himself. Often we see pastors praying over others and he did that too, but he wasn't afraid for the people and myself to see him at the altar. So when we were moving, I had asked the Lord, please um, give me one soul for every year that we've lived up North here and dad has pastored. And as I went to the altar, um, I didn't realize it, but all of a sudden I got a tap on the shoulder and I was asked to leave the sanctuary. <laughs> and I looked around and nobody was there anymore. And it was two o'clock in the morning and I finished the box of Kleenex that somebody had put beside me and I didn't know. And that was the beginning. And so I just thank God for what he's done. And as just like you, there's been seasons, there's been transitions. There have been times that I even said, I don't want this anymore. I don't want this call anymore. Give me another assignment, God. Well, I remember, I remember you saying yeah. that. <laughs> Give me another assignment. My son used to come into my room and he'd hear me and he'd say, why do you do this mom? And because he was young, I would say, well, you know, those soldiers, those, those army guys that you think are so fantastic. And he said, yeah, well, I said, that's what I do in prayer. And so it's, it's all good. And this is where I'm supposed to be. And this is what I'm supposed to do. And I do it because somebody needs to do it. And there's a lot of amazing prayer warriors, intercessors. There are a lot of them and they are believing for even more than we are seeing and they are believing for that goodness of God that's stored up. They're believing for the prophetic words and dreams and visions and, yes. and they're praying them into being. And so yes. God sees it all. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's his word and we can trust it. Wow. I love that story about how, you know, you found the Lord or you found your calling at the altar and that the altar is the goodness of where the goodness of God is found. And your dad is an amazing man. I know him. <laughs> <laughs> and I love him. He loves you and, guys too. And he modeled that well for you. You had a great That's foundation good. and a great root system that you were rooted in your family. Yeah. Um, so what does verse 19 mean to you where it says, uh, it, there was a condition there in that scripture that, that the Lord will store up his goodness for those who fear him. Yeah, for, I think everybody's walk and journey is different. But for me, a big, huge part of understanding that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him is also Philippians 2 and 5, uh, 5 to 11, actually. It says, let this mind be in you. And we talked about this so often. Yeah, we when we come to God, we are very selfish. We're selfish givers. We're selfish people in general. And so a lot of our prayer time, a lot of our worship time is still all about us. Yeah. What can God give me? How can he serve me? What is the goodness stored up for me? Mm -hmm. But he also wants us to know about the goodness that is stored up for us through knowing him, through yeah. loving him. So often we think of it in terms of material wealth or even friendships. Yeah. But as you know, with your children, it's just knowing him, just being with him. I remember mm -hmm. folding clothes and talking to him about something and saying, God, you must be so sick of hearing me talk to you about everything. <laughs> and he said, do you, does it bother you when your children come in and talk to you? 
And I was like, no. He said, does it bother you when they share your day? And I said, no. And he said, that's how I feel. Yeah. So when we go to prayer, we've talked about how difficult it can be when we come with hurts and offenses and life and Mm -hmm. the circumstances that you dealt with for that time. And and I had my own at that time and you were seeing, helping me pray through that as well. Um, It, it went both ways. Otherwise we probably wouldn't still be friends. We wouldn't be friends for 30 years plus years. Friendship, friendship doesn't just go one way. And so the, the key that we kept reminding each other is let this mind be in you. Mm -hmm. And we're reminded that it was in Christ Jesus and he humbled himself even to death on the cross. We've talked about this, the importance of not just committed Christians, but surrendered Christians. Yeah. Surrender to the will of the father. And then we're reminded again, when we have his mind like Christ Jesus, because Christ submitted himself to the cross. Yes. Like, (laughs) We all have crosses at different times, but instead of saying, God, take it away, God, take it off. And we would encourage each other. What are you trying to say to me in this time? Mm -hmm. What do you want me to learn from this time? And then we're reminded that once Christ surrendered himself, (laughs) God exalted him to such a place that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue confess Mm -hmm. And he says that those things under the earth and those, everything will bow to him in heaven and the things in the earth and under the earth. Well, what are those things under the earth? Those are the things unseen that we don't even know about. But as we surrender to the, the goodness of God, even though it doesn't feel like it sometimes. Right. Right. The will of God does not always feel good. Yeah. But it's like a parent who's disciplining a child. And perhaps I remember telling my child she couldn't go to a party at one time. And she thought I was the worst mother in the world, of course. Right. I let her go. And I ended up having to go and pick her back up. Because the things that were going on there terrified her. Mm, Yeah. And God did not let me rest the whole time she was gone to that party. And so I finally said... I have to go get her. I have to go get her. And when I came and got her, she said, thank you for coming to get me. And I said, that is how God is. Remember that when we want him to change our life, when we want him to take us out of, when we don't want to start that project again at 52 years old, when we don't want to have to do this, we have to remember that he has good stored up for us. There's purposes and reasons. Yes. There's such, there's so much purpose in that. I'm glad you brought that up because you know, the one thing I, even though I I don't know if I'd want to repeat that season, I wouldn't take it back because of what I gained in that season. When you would encourage me to lay before the Lord and to hear his voice, to find his goodness, his voice is his goodness, right? And so his voice, finding his voice or reading through the word until it would speak, you know, you really led me into those places as, as a wonderful friend, but as a prayer warrior. Now, what's the difference between an intercessor and a prayer warrior? Is there a difference? It's funny you asked that question. Many people have asked me that over the years, and I actually didn't know. So I actually just asked the Lord, is there a difference? What is it? And one night <laughs> during a particularly difficult struggle where I was actually feeling um, things happen, it's actually quite comical, if, if I may. So I went down to pray because I felt like I was having a heart attack. And so I got out of bed and I went down to my prayer room. And as I'm praying, I felt the, the release for that. And so the, the heart attack was gone. And then I felt like something else was happening with somebody's head. And I prayed until I got the release with that. And I had been weeping on the floor for so long that all of a sudden I started to pray for somebody who had a severe ear infection. Okay. <laughs> and and this is this is god and he said to me sit up and blow your nose so so i did and i i realized oh that was an intercession that was just what was going on because my sinuses were blocked because i've been praying and, and crying for so long so the difference is all that to say he was letting me know the difference is that they both pray the heart of god but the intercessor feels the heart of god yeah 
you've talked about that a lot. Yeah. And I didn't understand yeah. that earlier on when and you when do we, now, I, I do now because the Lord has begin, began to give me a heart for intercession. And I, I understand that now, but I did not understand that before. And right. so really quickly, um, for those who are feeling those things rather than how, how does intercessors take that instead of like, if you feel it, what do you mm -hmm. do with it? That's like, another how, great question. Okay. Michelle. That was a huge, huge learning curve. And um, just like the goodness with the, the stuff in the warehouse that you had to put out, when those things are on you, you have to put them out. We don't have to walk around with somber faces. We don't have to around, walk around with, you know, like dour and, oh, God, to put this heavy burden on me like Jeremiah or Ezekiel. That's not what it's about. This is the prayer closet and or calling another friend and having that release. But specifically, when we start to feel it, we give it back, just like the warehouses. We really give it back. Gender. And, and the more, yeah, absolutely. And so we even surrender the things that he's showing us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're, they're very difficult things like Ezekiel and Jeremiah. They carried the burden of the Lord. So I'm not minimizing it. But when I ask God to remove that, um, this assignment from me, he showed me that there's a way to make it easier and lighter. And that's why we started getting even more close yeah. because I started calling you for worship and right. you would sit down at the piano and God would show me that there's worship intercession. Yes. And there's a lightness to the music and there's a lightness to that type. And then we can give it back to him in that way. I mean, I was always giving it back to him before, but it seemed two things. The worship seemed to alleviate the burden of it and sharing it with somebody else who could help carry it and then have the release sooner right. uh, changed it. Right. I, that's very good. Those two points, because earlier on you would hold in, even though you shared in, in intercessory gr groups, intercession groups at your home and things like that, there was a lot that you would hold in mm -hmm. that you didn't share. And now you have the ability to release it's right. that release, but you're releasing it to God, not just to others. You're releasing it to God in worship. Yeah. in surrender. And so that's another thing Lisa and I are very passionate about is partnering with God in worship. Right. You know, and worship's not just music, but there's something about worshiping the Lord in song that okay. leads yeah. us into his presence because yeah. with his presence comes him, right? right? And so we're very very passionate about worship and prayer and partnering with him, right, Lisa? Amen. Well, that's the, that's the the best way to pray as opposed to thinking of ourselves, just like when you started the goodness outreach and yeah. when Bill got the, the first warehouse, you didn't keep all that stuff for yourself and family. You put it out. And yeah. as you put out, God kept filling. And it's the same thing with partnering with God. It's so we can God. spend our prayer times all about ourselves and our families yeah. and our woes and our wants. And again, very selfish, yeah. or we can say, okay, God, like Hezekiah, this, this is my needs. I'm laying them on the altar. Now, what's your heart? What do you want us to pray? Where do you want us to go in prayer? And he takes us to some, as, you, as yeah. you've seen and heard, some very strange, amazing places. But just like Bill started to, and yourself, Bill could not have done any of this without you. And uh, it's, beautiful <laughs> that, it's beautiful that you credit your husband and, and you're absolutely right too. You are such an amazing team together. Uh, I can't see either one of you doing what the other one does. Like you're just such a beautiful team. And that's how it is in prayer. Yeah, it it's is. It's that teamwork with God mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. listening for his heart and being surrendered to, okay, I'm hurt. I'm offended. I'm upset. I'm concerned about my finances. I'm concerned about my health or my friend's health or my mom or, or whoever. But, but as soon as we get to that place where it's a team, it's partnership, it's wanting to bring his kingdom and pray through his kingdom instead of my, my little world, my little kingdom, Right. and recognize that, then it changes. Then we start to see the goodness stored up. And then all of a sudden we're like, wow, wow. I didn't know that was on your heart. I didn't even know that place existed. And we start to, you know, go to different places. I know it's so beautiful that you, that's another thing that I've learned from you is in prayer times, you know, you'll say the Lord has put this on my heart. It had nothing to do with your family. It had, it was about the body of Christ, but I believe that through these, through intercession, through prayer, and through learning these uh, ways to go before the Lord, to ask him that question, Lord, what's on your heart today? 
I believe Lana Vosser said that too. She would go to him and say, Lord, what's on your heart today? If you haven't followed her, she's a wonderful prophetic woman of God. And Lisa and I both love Lana Vosser. But um, yeah, just learning what's on his heart today and how does he want us to pray? And of course, he made provision for us to take our needs to him, right? When, when he sent his son, Jesus, to shed his blood on that cross, the veil was rent in an instant. It was ripped. I say rent, ripped, rent, whatever word you want to use, instantly so we could go before the holy of holies. And I do believe that God is doing something new in this season, that we are realizing the holiness, the righteousness. When I think of God's goodness, going back to that, his mercy, his righteousness, his holiness, his kindness, his gentleness, his goodness, like all of that to me is goodness. But we do that, like, I love how we're comparing the storehouses of goodness and then the storehouse, you know, of the goodness prayer, yeah. Amen. and prayer, because it all relates here. Amen. It's so beautiful. But as we read through this passage of scripture, and we're going to uh, end with Lise praying through this, I want to get to that, Lise. We're going to have a, one more question here. Um, I thought about in verse 20, it says, you hide them in the shelter of your presence. We've talked about that, how in partnering with the Lord, that he hides us in the shelter of his presence. And that's why that worship and getting before him and getting our hearts right. And, and Lisa and I, we've repented to each other. You know, we get our hearts right. We, it's iron sharpening iron and repenting before the Lord for things that we're not listening or when he calls us to do something. You sheltered them in your presence far from accusing tongues. Amen. Can you give us some wisdom? Because you, you talked about this on one of your podcasts that it really reminded me of this scripture about how to pray for those who conspire against us or if there's an offense going on with someone in our life. Yes. And, and yes, we have talked about this before. And even as you've been talking, I've been looking up on my phone, a different yeah. scripture that, that was, um, all of the word, all of the word. Yeah, just like we do when we're having a, a coffee. We do, yeah. We're having coffee. So Proverbs tells us an offense forgotten promotes love. And there was a situation in my life where I had been very hurt and I was very angry. And as Rochelle knows, um, there, that has been a struggle in my life and, and putting that down and giving that to God and not, not excusing it and calling it um, passion, but calling it for what it is. And that's a huge part of it. And so on one particular occasion, I really wanted to go and lamb baste somebody and, <laughs> and let them feel my earthly rage. I have no and, idea what you're talking about. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked the Lord very, um, very sincerely by this time I, I was growing in a little bit of maturity and I went to my room and I said, God, I really feel like I need to go and talk to this person. And, uh, and he said, he led me to Proverbs and it said, an offense forgotten promotes love. And he said, you want to promote love in your home. You want to promote love in, in the work that you're doing, even for me and mm -hmm. lay this down and let it go. And so yeah. that was the model for many other things. Yeah. And again, I wanted to see the storehouses of God's goodness in my family mm -hmm. and in all the things that I do and touch and even just carrying him, even just carrying his presence. Right. Yes. You know, yeah, that's part of it. That's part of it. So part of it. Have to. Yeah, the offenses can actually be a dis big distraction. Well, if we do that, we're partnering with the enemy. We're picking up the enemy's tools instead of picking up God's tools. We have right. a choice when things happen in our life. Either we are going to pick up the tools that the enemy would have us use. And we're seeing a lot of that now with yes. anger, rage, well, lies, partnering with the lies. And even as a church, righteous, we call it righteous anger. Um, and there, don't get me wrong because there is there's a place for righteousness. But the Bible actually says be, be angry and sin not. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not discounting that, but I think too often we use that as an excuse right. to, to yeah. or to say words that we shouldn't say. So it really is going back to right. partner with God saying, what do you want me to say? Right. right. In prayer, we say, right. what do you want to say to us today? And then if there is an offense, you've really taught me and we don't have time to go into that, but you've taught me how to take an offense before the throne of grace and mercy, because if the Lord's throne is grace and mercy, and we take that person that we have an offense with, whether it's a family member, whether it's a friend, whether it's your daughter, son, whoever it is, you can, you can stand in the gap for them, take them before the Lord. And I tell you what, when I have done that, and you've taught me to do that, least something happens in my heart. 
something, I, a different perspective. I began to tip what we did earlier. We talked about tip, putting on the mind of Christ. He, yes. I began to see with his eyes and put on his mind and almost like it's a different perspective and a shift. So I wanted to cover that today because I love this scripture here. And it goes on to say in verse 21, praise the Lord for he has shown me the wonders of his unfailing love and kept me safe when my city was under attack. And our cities are under mm -hmm. attack. Our cities are under attack, but I believe the times that we go to the Lord in prayer over our cities, over our nation, over politically what's going on right now, because there's a biblical truth as we, we're not going to go into all that about justice. <laughs> we're so that's, just, that's a whole other, a few episodes. Because the goodness of God still justice, his justice too. Amen. So we'll cover that in another episode. But we, we know that in partnering with the Lord, the bottom line is today, his goodness is stored up for you. You Amen. may have thought that looked different that yep. maybe from my story and you know that the that the lord kept increasing our our warehouse space but it was because we wanted to partner with him and what he mm -hmm. was doing and the families that needed the help not just for our family even though we were under a personal crisis but because of that because of obeying and and finding the answer in prayer lease finding the answer in prayer we were able to to find our assignment and see God move in unprecedented ways. I'm telling you, I never ever dreamed, and I'm gonna cry, I never dreamed or imagined that he would be using us in the ways that he's using us. I just, and I, I can't wait to see what he does through your podcast. I cannot wait to see what he does in each one of your lives as you step out into these places to Amen. hear God's voice, to partner with him, to know that his goodness is stored up for you. This is the promise for those who fear him. Amen. So I want us to end our time. I want Lise to take a moment to pray through this. And then I have some closing remarks. It has been an honor to be with you today. I love our time together. I value our time together. And I thank God for what he's gonna do in your life. If you're discouraged today, I pray that you're getting hope through this message. So Lise, would you do that? Would you give us the honor of praying through? This is kind of what she does on her podcast. And I wanted her to do this today. Well, so this is what I do on my podcast now. This is kind of what I just do in life until you push me into the podcast. So what I typically do, as you know, I will open my phone Bible or I will open my Bible Bible and I will just pray the scripture. And the reason we are having this episode today is because uh, of that scripture, Psalm 31, that the Lord gave me. And I said to you, um, we really need to partner with God in prayer today yes. um, for our world and for the people of God through this scripture. And you said, yes. can you come and do this on the show? Yes. And so, yes, absolutely. So let's do that now. Father God, we come to you today. We magnify you. We thank you. We exalt you. You are God. You are our rock and our fortress. We ask you, Father, as we repent for those times that we have made even prayer time about us and the goodness that you have stored up just for us. We repent for that, God. We want it to be this, the, the times that we come to you and our lives. We want it to be about partnering with you, what you want for us, what you want for us to speak through you and how you want us to partner with you. So we thank you, Lord. And we ask for the honor of your name. Lead us out of the danger that we are in God and in our world right now and what's happening. For we find protection in you alone. We entrust our spirit into your hand. Rescue us, O God, for you are a faithful God. We will be glad and rejoice in your unfailing love for you have seen our troubles. Thank you, God, that you care about the anguish of our souls. You've not handed us over to our enemies, but you've set us up in a safe place. We are trusting in you, O Lord. And we say you are our God. You are our God. And our future is in your hands. Rescue us from those who are hunting us down relentlessly right now. Let your favor shine on us, O oh God, for we are your servants. In your unfailing love, rescue us, God. Do not let us be disgraced because it's to you that we cry for help. How great is the goodness that you have stored up for those who fear you. We trust you, God. We put you in remembrance of your word right now, and this is your word. Mm -hmm. You lavish it on those who come to you for protection, and we're coming to you now we have never seen so many calls to prayer. And so for that, we thank you, God. Your word says that you bless us before 
the watching world. Let there again be a distinction, O oh God, between the righteous and the wicked, because you hide us in the shelter of your presence, safe from those who conspire against us. We lift up all those in the name of Jesus who are fighting for truth on government levels and institutional levels yes. and social media platforms and every level, Lord, where people are fighting for truth. Keep them safe who are conspiring against them. Shelter them in your presence, O oh God, far from accusing tongues. We praise you, O oh God, for you have shown us the wonders of your unfailing love. Mm -hmm. So we thank you. We magnify you. We give you this day, this time, this week, and we pray for everyone who's tuned in. And we thank mm -hmm. you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that your Holy Spirit will speak to them exactly what they need to hear, exactly what they need to know, so that they can go forward in partnering with you in prayer and seeing the goodness of God that you've stored up for them, their families, their loved ones, their churches, and the nations, because that's what you called us to do, Lord. So we thank you, we bless you, we magnify you, and we especially thank you for this time together. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Yes, we will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. We right? will. Yes. My dear friend, I have to sign off on our coffee time. Okay, you sign off and I'll just close us out. Okay, so it was so good to have Lise on today was such an honor. And so I'm just gonna close real quick. Just, just remind you that like God's provision with filling up the storehouses for the goodness project, like his provision as she taught us today and, and we heard her life inspiring story about going to the throne room of God to, to hear his goodness, to hear his voice, to know that we could, tangibly experience and spiritually it's spirit to spirit that we find truth i hope that you're encouraged today just remember that in proverbs 9 10 it says that the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom so there is that condition here in the scripture that the goodness of god is stored up for those who fear him and many times we need to know what that means we reverence him and so we need wisdom in our life of how to combat all the voices that are going on for those of you that feel like you're under attack for those of you who have your Facebook messages ripped down because you're sharing truth, all of that applies. So there will be times that we need the reassurance of the goodness of God. Just rest in his promise and stand firm, knowing Lise was able to reassure us today of God's goodness in prayer and in worship and praying out the word. And I wanted you to hear that so you can do that and go tune in to her podcast and count, enjoy an encounter so she can walk you through every day. You can just put that on as you drive. Would love for you to connect with her. And so it's been such an honor to be with you today. Uh, please go join us on thegoodnessproject.com. Get involved with us there so that you can also partner with us around the world to show the goodness of God in the land of the living. God is doing amazing things, especially right now in Israel. Even though Israel has been, is now on lockdown, the Goodness Project was able to send seven containers full of product. And recently when the peace agreement happened in the land of Israel, the Goodness Project got to respond to the disaster. They sent over balloons and um, bombs in, in uh, one of the regions there. And so the Goodness Project was able to respond. We respond to disasters here and hurricanes here in the United States. And so God is up to something amazing. And uh, this week, we the Goodness Challenge this week, and please, if you haven't typed in where you're watching from, please do that now. I forgot to say that at the beginning. I want to know where you're watching from. Um, so the goodness challenge last week was to find two to three people to share the goodness of God with a neighbor. So if you did that, would you type in the comments what happened or what, how the goodness of God was shown to those at your workplace or your neighbors? But today, the, the challenge today is to pray for someone who has either come against you or your family, like we talked about, that maybe there's an offense, to take them to the throne of grace and mercy and to let that offense, let the Lord handle that in his justice system, in his throne room, and to let that thing go so you're not distracted from seeing the goodness of God stored up for you. Okay, so part of learning to live in the goodness of God is to make sure that we don't have offense in our heart and that we don't let that become a distraction in our life. So it's been so great to tune on with all of you today and to spend this time. I honor this time. I value this time. Be sure and connect with us at thegoodnessproject.com. Go to rochellefletcher.com so you can get the invitation to intimacy with God. 
I can't wait to see you next week. Um, thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you soon. God bless you guys.